Mr. Madison. Well, so I was going to say just, you know, I don't know that at 1.30 we should be, you know, taking this step. And I was going to see if there was an appetite to put it over, especially because I have some, some questions uh, that I don't think have been answered yet tonight, but it, it may be that people just want to sort of push on through. Um, you know, this is such an odd situation because, um, y you know, you have, it is an exclusive use of a huge part of a sacred space to us. It, it is sacred, and it is exclusive. And we can sort of attack one another personally, and you know, you have speakers coming up and saying, you want to throw archers out and all that. I, I don't think anybody on the dais wants to do that. But let's be clear about what we're talking about. We're talking about granting a, an active recreation group with, with potentially dangerous implements exclusive use of a huge part of the Lower Arroyo. And by that, it is a huge part of it. You bet. For 80 years, Steve. Well, those are, those are different points, but let me just, <laughs> how many acres are we talking about? The southern range is approximately 7.5 acres. Seven and a half acres? Okay, that's a big piece of property in the Arroyo. Now, relative to the entire Arroyo, maybe not. But the argument is that it's not exclusive. It is. It is exclusive. It, what, what's being proposed here tonight is nobody can walk in there. Nobody can walk oh, it's there. not exclusive to the PRA. No. Nobody no. can walk there while they're doing the archery use. No. No, that's the archery uses all the time. No, no. The, let, let me clarify. Okay. The, they can use the perimeter trail as any time it's open. What they can't use is a maintenance trail that is a non-designated trail that never should have been utilized by the PRA or anybody else because it's not a designated trail within the Lower Royal Master Plan. Well, That's what's being changed. Okay. Are, can you go and sit and have a picnic? You're to stay on the trail in the, in the Lower Arroyo. And that's the rule throughout the Lower Arroyo. Right. Okay. Well, so then you turn to this counterparty that we're, we're entering into this exclusive agreement with, right? And, I mean, I'm telling you, I, I, I ask Gary those questions. I have a printout. They're, they're suspended by the Secretary of State. They're not even a, a, a nonprofit corporation in good standing. And this is as of January 23rd. 2015. So, you know, I, I just, that gives me pause. And then we hear about these guidelines that they say over and over and over, we've been certified as completely safe. Where's the certification? Do we, can we see that if we're going to grant this group an exclusive use in the lower Arroyo to, to, you know, use these bows and arrows? And again, my dispute is not with the archers that are here. It's with the fact that they once they get the use, then they say, but that's just when we're there. Then we're going to leave, but the, anybody can come along and shoot bows and arrows with those targets there. That's where the problem lies, I think. I mean, these really skilled archers could have an accident, but it's probably very unlikely. And I, I too, support the kids and the programs and all. That's great. But what's, what's our regulatory oversight of allowing any Yahoo who goes out and gets a bow and arrow and who's not part of the PRA to come in, and what's our protection? So I think we, we should for sure, if we're going to go forward, we f should for sure make sure that the PRA is in good standing, because legally a corporation that's, that's suspended can't even enter into an agreement. So we should do our homework there and, and ask, and Gary's name and address is right here, Lambert Drive. It's on the notice of suspension. So that, that's odd to me. And then we should ask them for the certification. They keep telling us that they've been certified 100% safe by the NFAA. I read one paragraph of the guidelines. It doesn't look to me like they comply because you can't have arrows going onto private property. And Gary conceded at the start of the hearing that that would happen if you missed the target. Uh, so we should button that piece down. We should for sure have a process so that Everything goes through PRA. So anybody that's going to go down there with a bow and an arrow has to have a certification by PRA 
There's insurance that covers them, not just the members, but anybody that's using. And I, per, I for one, like the idea of having range masters, having people there that are skilled, that are teachers, basically what PRA does, it sounds like, when they're there. We shouldn't permit, uh, you know, sort of unregulated, unsupervised use down there. We really shouldn't. And I, I would support making PRA, provided they, they are in good standing and they've been certified as being safe. I, I'd support making them the range masters. But it, it's this idea of sort of in for a penny, in for a pound. And then what are they paying? I mean, what do we charge little leagues and soccer leagues you know, for, for much smaller parcels? I mean, you want to talk about acreage? We charge them way more money than we would charge this group. And maybe that's the policy judgment we want to make. Uh, but we've heard that 17% are Pasadena residents and 83% aren't. In those other examples, we charge non-residents more. Now, would one argue that the Arroyo Seco is less entitled to that kind of protection for local residents or, or more entitled to it? You could argue either side, but we shouldn't just sort of assume that for three or $4,000 a year, you get the exclusive use of, of this much of the Arroyo Seco, which, as Tim Brick said, and I don't endorse his other comments, but he was spot on, and Ann Scheid as well, who's a prominent historian of this area. This is supposed to be passive recreation. Now, there's been an exception for a long time, I get it, but let's make sure we're, we're on top of this. Let's make sure we're not gonna jeopardize the Army Corps uh, funding that might come to naturalize the area and beautify it by having this active recreation. I mean, are we sure of that? Uh, so, you know, I, I'm, I'd be prepared to support something like this motion, but I, we really have to, if, if the recent years have taught us anything, in this city hall, it's that we, we can do a better job of crossing our T's and dotting our I's. And, and we need to do that here.